Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to print effects in Reaper. Now, generally, if you want to print effects that run your tracks, you can do it a few easy ways. You can go to the track, right click it, and go down here and either freeze the tracks or render them to other tracks. And that'll print the effect and even allow you to recall the effect later if you want to tweak it again. But there are situations where you want to do it simpler. We have many different audio files and you want to treat them separately, but you don't want to go through and freeze each one or create stems. You just want to print the sound with their effect and then move on. Especially makes a lot of sense when you're dealing with a lot of files, like for a video game, or in my case, for some movie sound effects. I have some audio files right here, and I just want to print some effects to them to make them sound better. But I want different effects for each of them. And then I want to print them so I can just move on. Let's see what we have now. We have a piano part. A synth part. And then a drum part. As you can tell, they're completely dry and very boring. So let's start with the piano part. And let's add some reverb to it. I'll go to the effects on the track. I'll go down here to add reverb using the reverb plugin that comes with Reaper. Double click it. And this reverb is an impulse response reverb. So I want to add a file to it which sampled a live space. So go down here to add. Choose File, and I'm going to try using a large plate right here. I'll adjust the level of the reverb with the wet and keep the dry full up. That feels pretty good right there. So I want to print this to a separate track with the piano and the reverb together. So create a new track down here. I'll name it Movie Sounds with Effects. And then I'm going to bus from this track to this track. Right from here, I'll grab it and drop it on this track like this. See how the cursor changes to a patch cable? So I can drop it here. And here's the send that's created. We'll use Post Fader Full Up. And then I want to turn off this track, because I don't want to hear the sound twice. So we could do it two different ways. We could open up the routing and take it out of the master parent send, or we could do the shortcut, hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, and just click this, and that takes it out of the master parent send, right here. So now we're not going to hear it through this track. We're just going to hear it through this track. But we hear the piano with its reverb. So now if I go into record on this track, it's going to record the input. We want to change that. So we'll go over here and switch it from the input to the output. And I'm going to choose output stereo, so it records in stereo. Go into record, and now just record it. And notice at the end, I'm going to keep it playing so it grabs that reverb tail as it fades out. That should be good enough. Now we can mute this track, and we have the piano and its effect on this track. So now we can move on, creating a different effect for our synth. Let's clear this one right here by holding Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac to clear it, and we'll create a new one for our synth. I'm going to start off with a delay. I'll bring down the wet just a bit, bring the length of it 
to about 280 milliseconds, add some feedback, so the delay repeats, and let's hear what that sounds like. Let's make it more interesting by duplicating it left and right. So I'll pan this one to the left, add a new tap, pan it to the right, and make it a bit longer. Let's hear that. That'll work. Then on top of this, let's add a reverb. We'll go to the reverb plugin again, but this time, We'll choose a different file. I'll go down here to Vocal Whispers and blend it in right here. That feels pretty good. Now all we have to do to print that is go back into Record. Everything else is already set up from before. Again, we let it play so we don't lose the delay and reverb tails. We can mute this. Now we have a piano with the reverb and our synth with delay and reverb. Now let's check out the drums. Again, they're very dry. Let's try adding a phase. We'll search phase and choose the one right here. Four tap phaser, which sounds like this. Let's add a reverb on top of this. We'll go back to the reverb, but again, this time we'll choose a different file. This time we'll choose very large ambience. We can adjust it here. Pretty cool. Then once again, just print it and we'll get that phase and reverb along with the drums printed to this track. So you have three different effects with our three different sounds all on this track. We got our piano, our synth, and finally the drums. And we can keep going with as many different sounds as we have, making this process pretty quick. Now, if you have a situation we just want to print the effect, but not the actual sound. You want to keep them separate. We can still do that. Let's go back and clear this. We're back to the dry with the master parent send turned on. Let's add that same reverb to this, but let's print the reverb on a separate track. So create a track down here. We'll name it just effects. Then we'll bust this track to it. Leave it full up, post fader, as we can adjust the effect on this track. Then we'll add the effect here instead. We'll go back to our reverb in that same file, which is large plate right here. And instead of adjusting it here, we'll bring the wet all the way up and the dry all the way down. So now we can adjust the effect from this fader. Now, if we want to print just that effect, we can make a new track right here and name it Effects. Then we can send from this track to it, full up, take this track out of the master parent send. Now we're just hearing the effects through here. But once again, we want to record the output instead of the input right here. 
We'll do it in stereo. Go into record and record just that effect. Now we can turn off this track. Now we have just the piano here and just the reverb down here. Or we could blend them with them both on. But by doing it this way, we still printed the effect. So it's not using any CPU processing, but we could also work through each section, changing the effect here and then printing it to this track. So with this method, it's very flexible. You could blend them together to one track or keep the effect separate on a separate track, but still printing a separate effect for each one of our files. So that's pretty much it. That's printing effects in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!